Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. We have our Nefania again, and over the course of the last couple of videos, you've seen how we've checked out the internals of this, how it looks okay. We've checked the power supply. We've hooked the power supply up to this and pushed the buttons and heard some TikToks, but we haven't seen any video yet. So um, that's the next stage before, before I can feel that I can actually even make a video about this, a proper video about this. We need to sort this out. So I had a look on the internet and I found its entire schematics. And judging by the size of this staple, this would have been a little booklet that would have come with it, I'm sure. And this would have been basically everything in it. And if you look through, I'm going to, you know, I'll just do a do, 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 like a drawing time <laughs> overview. It looks a little bit ghosty, actually, the print, but it's just about legible. And if you search around on it, you end up at this. And this, I firmly believe, is the output. And it looks like you have whatever that symbol means. Um, but you have a sync on pin one, red green, blue, and then a ground. And then you have a composite output here, which would probably be in CCAM, which we're not going to use. And then underneath that, you've got sound, which is just whizzing off elsewhere. Now, that all comes out on this unit, in this port here, which is a very odd little din. I'll show you this. Um, it seems to be quite common on these, uh, I'm gonna say Soviet, Russian, I don't know which it's which. I don't know how long they continue to use these um, devices, but din, din was popular back in the day and it's still a pretty darn good format. You know, it's just about hand solderable with a reasonable density. But you can see these pins, it's um, one, two, three, four, five, seven pin, and they're very strangely numbered. In fact, I'm gonna zoom in even more because you've got to just see this to believe it. You have, starting from here, six, one, four, two, five, three, and seven. So yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> and uh, these pin spacings vary. So for example, if you have a Mega Drive, it uses actually a pretty similar one to this, apart from it's got a center pin, and pins one and three are more spaced out. You know how I know? Because I had a bunch of these and I've modified it. So what I've done, I've cut off the center pin here and you can see it's a bit naughty, but I've bent these two pins. And that does actually get you, I think, a usable amount in there. It's not great, and it could damage the port if you really force it, but I doubt uh, you know, you're gonna be using it that hard, you know, or you know, you could actually just leave it all hooked up in the box. So what we're gonna do is have a little study of the uh, schematics and just see how we're gonna wire this up. You can see I've been doing some pondering here. This is a SCART cable and these uh, the numbers in black are the pins on the Nefania. So as far as I can deduce, sync will be going to pin one. Um, video ground I'm gonna take off the shield and there's reasons for that in a moment. And then you've got the RGB, that's standard pins from the Nefania again. And then on the actual SCART, you do have um, grounds for these, which we may or may not need to hook up, which will be pin 17, 13, 9, 5, 4. So we'll do that again. They'll be hooked to the ground coming in off the shield. And you're saying, why are you using the ground coming in off the shield, not pin two? That's because I'm gonna retask the Nefania's pin two, which is down here, which is currently ground to a three volt output. I'm gonna disconnect that from the existing circuit and make that three volt output so we can hook that up to pin 16 on the SCART to give us the RGB blanking mode so the TV will switch into the right mode. I feel because it's going to be mainly me that's using it I think it's going to be absolutely fine and I'll document it and even if this passed to someone else's hands the chances are they're just going to use my SCART lead they're not going to want to make their own so I think that's going to be an okay okay little modification here and then the audio the mono sound channel coming from the unit will just go into the stereo on the SCART. So we're going to open it up and see if we can make this modification. Hopefully it'll be a bit quicker now because we've been in here before. We've removed the security putty. I'm trying a new screwdriver. Ooh, that works. So I feel a little bit, you know, I'm not, I'm kind of second guessing myself about 
reconfiguring this port away from standard. But I think as long as I make sure it's documented and you know I might actually print a little label here. You know, like saying showing a picture, you know, the pinout of that port as it stands now. I think we'll be okay. I'm trying to think what well, the worst that can happen. I mean I suppose you could pop a fuse in the power supply if it was really um, bad. But the chances are that 5 volts will be coming straight from the power supply. So I think you're going to have to blow half an amp if it gets shorted to, to ground via that, I think, 150 ohm resistor we're going to use. So I'll take a chance. I think we're okay. Now the putty screw is staying put. And we're going to peel this open like we, we did last time. Soldering iron is now on. We'll have a little look. So let's just make sure we do a little sanity check. That's definitely the TV port. And I'm actually really surprised in a way because the ground pin here but I better zoom in, you guys won't be able to see it, isn't connected to anything because I think it's getting its ground from the chassis, but it's probably a good idea to buzz that out while we're here. I'm not going to rely on it though, I'm just going to move the existing ground pin from that pin too anyway, but let's just check. So that's the ground. Yeah, am I losing my mind? Ground is on pin two. Check that's happening. Yeah, it's not it's not actually buzzing there, interestingly enough. Let me check this. Fitted this panel back in and you can hear it does. It is it is um got ground potential, yeah, zero volts potential. But when I took it out, it seemed that it loses it. <laughs> So I'm not sure through which strange mechanical means it's doing that, but I think it means it's, as, in, as far as I'm translating that, it means that it's okay. You know, that's probably how it's supposed to be. Because <laughs> the last thing I want to do is wire up something. Look, you can see it's, it's very, very strange. Anyway, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to move that pin. So we'll flip this over. It's going to be pin two, which is this guy right here. And this guy's going to there. That's clearly the ground rail. So I'm just going to whop it off here. There we go. And that is going to be soldered onto there, which is the chassis, basically. So let's do that now, get it out of the way. Come on, solder dispenser. Oh dear. Hopefully this isn't somehow bypassing the double insulationness of the power supply, creating a lethal cocktail of voltages at your fingertips. Um, I'll check that, of course. <laughs> so. Now it's a very definite connection. I wonder if um, some of these nuts and bolts were basically, you've got the nuts and bolts here, if they were just touching that, something like that. Something weird was going on anyway, intentionally or unintentionally, I've modified it. So we're just gonna get ourselves now a little piece of wire so that we can connect now to somewhere on this board. We'll have to find a five volt rail though. We're good to go. The Nathania's powered up, so if I push buttons, it does make a little tick tock sound, which I think is good for this. Not entirely sure. So I want to find where we have a suitable 5 volt rail. I'm just going to look at the kind of the main areas right now. Um, for me, I think that's the continuation of that ground, which it is. Ooh, we could look for specific um, things like the pins. Let's try this capacitor. Oh, 4.98 volts on that side of it. Um, let's try the other side. Let's check that out, make sure. Yeah. Um, so we do have some likely lads already. 
just following the trace around. It does seem to be here. Yeah, 4.98 volts. So we have a, a, a pretty decent source there. So what we'll need to do is basically get a wire from the connector over to there and via appropriate resistors. And I didn't find a you know 100, 150 ohm, but I have a 330, so we can wire a couple of those in parallel. So let's get in and do that. Just solder our three volt wire onto here. Now each wire either side of it has a nice bit of heat shrink on, but I'm just going to push that on. You don't want any sort of shorts. And then let's pull that through, get this panel into place. Now I've turned off the unit, so there's no live voltages buzzing around. So we can work in a controlled, a sensible and controlled manner. So we're pretty sure we want to connect to here, but just as a, as a sanity check, I'm just going to have a quick buzz around. It's a shame because there's a really nice rail here that would have been great. Because this is a an expansion bus connector, so... Oh! One. These four actually are at live potential. Good, that's even better. That's where we're going to go, and I'll show you what we do. And we're going to zoom in right there. So these four end pins appear to be what we need. So I don't want to take the board out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these pretty short. In fact, I'm just going to bend them over and cut them real short. And you'll see why. You can see I'm, I'm, you can hear me potentially cutting these off camera. But uh, there's not much to see. Really. Look, I'm just, I'm just cutting them like that. OK. Bink. The reason being, get the solder in iron now, we're going to solder them from the top. So I'm just going to put a little blob here. Now I saw, a, I saw a really cool video where someone has made one of these into a 128 and they've actually made a whole expansion board for this. They've actually taken that all out, which is crazy, right? That's one. So if that was the appropriate value, 100k, 150, sorry, 150 ohm, 100 ohm, you could just get away with that, but I have to put two in. So that's there. Now, I really want them both to be at the same potential on this side, which is something like that. I'm just going to twist that. I feel this is all being done in the correct spirit as well. This is this is how you'd be definitely doing it at home back in the days. Oh, there's a bit of a blob there. Don't, don't. There you go. Control, I controlled that blob. So then we're going to trim this like so. And then I'm going to just take that end wire. <laughs> I'm doing some dangerous wire stripping. You're going to pull out all of the DIN connectors if it goes wrong. I'm actually just going to quickly grab my Kynar trimmers and it says only for Kynar wire but I'm just going to, I want to just give it a little nibble. Ah, oh, there you go. See, it's just a little nibble. You've got to be careful though. If you use Kynar strippers on stuff, you can really ruin it. It's really annoying and they're not, there's nothing special about those strippers, not Kynar specific but it's only use it on Kynar so you don't bite up with the uh, teeth. If you try to chew on something too hard with one of those you really get stuffed. So I'm gonna find a piece of heat shrink that'll work on that. It's a bit too tight. That would be absolutely perfect. We don't want to waste it. Let's cut that in half. If you haven't invested in it, invest in a box of mix length or mix mix gauge pre-cut heat shrink. So useful. Now, now you can see what this is about. So you've got the two ends of the resistors connected. Now I'm just going to connect that wire 
and I pre-tinned it so it shouldn't be any effort to actually solder. I adjusted it slightly, I really want to make sure it's nicely in the middle, so then I can do that. Uh, yeah, you could probably do it prettier, and I could use hot air instead of a lighter, but that's that's, that's how we do it, that's how we do it back in the, uh, back in Soviet Russia. Oh, 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 okay, so shall we pretend? We'll pretend we're going to bag this up. Let's pop the lid on. <laughs> Blow out all our swarf. Hopefully this will not destroy our Nefania. <laughs> Nefania! I think that was the uh, lady in um, Napoleon Dynamite, wasn't it? Was that? No, that was La Fonda. Come on. It's not quite feeling like it wants to close how it, it should, but let's not worry about that too much. We've got the power here. I'm going to power it back on. I didn't hear any pops. I can still hear it doing things. And we're going to take our multimeter. Let's measure out that pin voltage to see if it's kind of what we want. And it's on pin. That pin 2. That pin 2 is hot. There's a 5 volts. Pin 2 is hot, boy. And it hasn't taken out the unit. So I'm going to screw this up. We're on to the second and more painful stage now. I have had a look around the house, couldn't find a suitable lead apart from this one, which is unfortunately my trusty test lead. And the reason this is made is so that you can plug that into the back of your television. And then this end, you can hook onto your little jammer boards and everything like that. And I only uh, have a few wires, only a few wires you need. You've got ground, the uh, synchronization, blanking, whatever you want to call it, and then RGB. And that was a really useful thing. But these leads are like three pounds. They're cheap enough. Um, if you're going to make a lead for something, just consider buying one of these, a long one of these. The one which especially, I think they call them full wired or something, because they'll have all of the wires you need already connected. I might, I might pop both ends just to double check these, but they, uh, that they should have everything you need ready to go. And they're cheap enough now, yeah, three pounds for a couple of meters. And that's, you can see my previous attempt. And you'll be able to get a second end, actually. I'll be able to save this. And then if I do need to make another wire, it's there. So just looking briefly at how these are actually wired. <laughs> You could leave this end on, actually. You just need to add, hmm, red, green, blue. <laughs> you got, oh yeah, I'm not going to do that because we have audio and a few bits and pieces to, to hook up here. But yeah, you could. I'm just saying, you could, you could. Um, so it's up to you how you want to do it. Have a look at that and take a photo, perhaps, so you can see what the wire colours were doing. I'm just going to hold this up. So if you remember the diagram here, that's the way round. So pin 1 is bottom left here, pin 20 is this top right. So actually, I think I will do that. I'm going to take a photo with my phone, just so that I do have a reference before I desolder everything. And I only want to keep what I'm going to use. I've been trying to put it off, but I do have to start soldering. So we do have our seven pins here and a bit of a stub in the middle that I can't get rid of. So what I'll do is I'm just going to fill these little solder buckets right now. So that's going to save a bit of effort later. I'm not sure if that's in focus for you, but yeah, they're, they're like little little holes basically. And I'm just touching the side trying to get a bit of heat to transfer and then putting a little dollop in there. There's probably better ways of doing it, but whatever works at the end of the day, because this has got, we're going to have some pretty good strain relief on there. Bit of a little drip. Okay, right. So I've got my little diagram here so I don't, don't get lost. So if we want to start with pin, pin 6 is sound, if you remember, pin 6 is sound, which on our SCART diagram actually happens to be pins, also pins 6 and 2. So what I've got here is the connector here, 
The idea is basically I'm going to at least attempt to take these off the scar and solder them as I go along, but <laughs> I'm starting to feel it. It's already been a little bit unwieldy. Okay, so we've got those there, six and two. I'm just going to adjust, adjust the angle of this. And if you can, if you've got two wires that go into one solder bucket, see if you can mechanically get them twisted together. Easier before they're tinned, but it's still still just about doable, get a twist in. A little twist, a flick of the wrist. And we're away. That's it, we're started, we have begun. So the next one around there is pin one, which is sync, which is pin 20 on the scar. So you, you're gonna, you, it is a bit fiddly, you're gonna probably have to pull these things apart and work with them a bit you might need a bit of tweezers or something but it's probably still the best way to prevent you getting lost as you're going along so there we go and that one's a bit bit crusty I'm just gonna clean that up get back in there And I'm just going to tin it because I did remove. Yeah, it's a bit nasty that one. It's gone a bit nasty. But we can still do it. It's okay. You get the idea though, don't you? You're just you're just working your way round. One at a time. Getting it in there. And there's little bits here, like in there I can see there's a little bit of wire that. I don't really want there, but you can go in afterwards and just trim that. Or, or right away, you know, as best you can. So I'm just going to continue and work my way round. So I've been working on this uh, through the night and just to show you my little setup here I have a 4x3 TV with RGB uh, input by the means of the SCART. I have the Nafania here and you can see I actually have been doing quite a lot of work on this uh, just sort of debugging it because some things on this were not quite as expected in terms of the wiring etc but more or less uh, we followed uh, what we said we were going to do on this thing and um, basically you can see at the moment I've just got part of the the shell as it were the shield connected here so we get a nice earth bond so I'm going to just plop in the power it's a nice fizzly two pin bang and you might have just seen that briefly Flicks up 1982 Sinclair Research, so we're good. Now, you might also hear that, but the sound is also coming through to the screen, which is exactly what we want. And I'm going to try to get it to make a sound beep. There we go, beep one. How do we do a comma? Where's a comma? Comma, no. Tell you what, this keyboard, in terms of the Spectrum keyboard and this layout with all the shifts is a bit annoying. Okay, but we're going to hit enter there. So you get the sound coming through the monitor. The picture is actually really good, really stable. You can see it's rock solid. I'm actually very pleased with the picture. Look at that. I mean, that's absolutely great. So it's good it all works, but what we've got to do now is basically... Oh, okay basically rewire this because of course we need to put all of the strain relief and everything so I'm going to take a nice photo of that oh by the way and you can see I've chopped off the scar all the wires that I wasn't using I've chopped off but we'll look at this on the bench it's nice to be back on a bench it's no fun working away from your tools I had to drag a lot of stuff over there all my oscilloscopes and things and I'm not looking forward to having to drag them all back but um, you know at that uh, moment of of distress when it finally worked it was fantastic I have to admit I put this down and went indoors a few times and had a few cups of tea over this um, but we got there 
Um, so yeah, just always be a bit cautious, I guess, when you're working on these types of things because how you interpret the diagrams and how the diagrams are might not be the reality. There could be different versions of hardware and things, but it doesn't matter. A little bit of sense, take your time. Don't let it get in your head. You'll blow up something if you do. Now, what we're gonna do, soldering eyes on, I'm just gonna desolder these because you can see I've made a little map and there's been a lot of testing on these. So these joints are not the best anyway at this point. You know, they're, you know when you get that rickety nasty looking solder the wires have started to melt they need retinning but getting the colors right knowing what pin they go on that's all i need to know at this point because once you know it works you can kind of relax a little bit you know you know you're on the right track all the hardware is good now we're just taking our time the experimental phase has been done um didn't make a note of these colors actually on there on the shield so let's just write that down real quick as the uh, the last point to make. We have a ground shield here, and we're gonna write purple. Purple with white, <clears throat> purple. And the, um, I don't know, I'm calling it shield, I can't remember what we bloody call it. Anyway, that's fine, that's fine. I know what I mean. <laughs> I know what I mean. I was tweeting earlier about just basically losing vocabulary and that's why. It's worse, it's worse in a, a lockdown, right? We're losing vocabulary, we're not speaking to anybody. I got kids to speak to. I'm not really into technical jargon. Right, <laughs> let's pull all of those aside and just take your time. If you can, unwind these a little bit and you might get a uh, bit of extra length because sometimes they're all hooked up and knotted around each other. So here you can see I've got a nice little bundle of three that I want to trim off. Now if you're worried about additional grounds, so basically everything is referenced to the same ground at this point, but if you're worried about additional grounds, you can always do it the other end of the plug. I know it's not really ideal, but if you think about it, the screening, that's the word I want, it's screening. The screening here is on that ground reference. So from a sort of interference-y, signal -y thing, it shouldn't make any difference, but if your TV happened to need them, just open up the other end of the spot, uh, sc ugh, sp <laughs> scart plug. I almost cut the purple wire there, tripping over my tongue. Um, I just make the uh, links in there. So if you, if you happened to need a green ground, red ground, sync ground, audio ground, just join them up there. Now I'm just nibbling, I, I'm, because I was sort of distracted, I almost cut the wrong things there, and that'd be a real annoyance. So you'd have to strip this right back, and then grab all of the wires again, fetch them back, have to strip them. Right, there you go. So that's looking okay. Then we've got to feed in the strain relief. Now that is possibly harder than it's going to look now. I'm almost tempted though, while I'm on here, just to get a bit of heat shrink down there too, if you can. It doesn't hurt, you see. Oh no. Let's get it. Oh, that's a good old tight fit there. I don't think I'll bother with the heat shrink. That's pretty tight as it is. And then all we're going to do is splay these all out, measure them up. So these ones that are going to go, there's our other purple one. So these ones are going to connect straight here to this metal work. That's why they do have the little holes here, so you can solder onto those. So it's the two purple ones. Now, I would not trust the colours of this. If you've got your own SCART cable, your colours will definitely vary. And then what I'm going to do now is just cut these, trim them and prepare them again. So the ends are all prepared, just a case of now of getting them back. I'm a little bit unhappy because the solder buckets on this connector now are full, but it's not a big problem. And I'm just going around again, taking way more care now, way more care in how I want this, because I want once this is done, sealed up, that's it. It's never coming apart again. It'll be like for the entire life of this machine going forward forever. 
nobody should have a problem with this cable. I think that's that's what you should be aiming for. <laughs> You're a curator of this retro hardware. Okay, now we have to get it all to fit nicely without breaking itself apart in the process. So this only goes on one way, which is fortunate. You can see that will lock in like that. And we've got this extra bit of length. So that's where you've got to be careful if you're trying to accommodate that by I'm just gently pushing back. You can see the wire is all, all curling up in there, but that's fine. And I'm going to poke through those wires we need to, to fix in a moment. Because first, I'd like to crimp this one. A little squeeze. That's not the prettiest. There are tools you can use to get much better looking uh, crimp on, but I'm happy enough with that. And what I'm going to do is just touch that. A little touch of solder on there. In fact, let me just add a little bit more. And we should be done. Just pop that on there. Only one thing really to look out for is that there's a little lip here, which is kind of a locking doodad. So when you put your wire back, if it wants to go back, make sure this strain relief just lines up. There's a little window there. I might need way more pairs of hands to do this though. Let's get it. Let's get it at least in the uh, vicinity. Oh, almost there. Let's try that again. <laughs> It really doesn't want to go. There we go. Now, before I push my one on, because we did adjust that, I'm going to just lift that up to make sure it really does lock in. There we go. So, that's looking pretty neat. A bit of dirt on there or something. Let's make sure that's nice and clean. Excellent. Haha. <laughs> Oh, I suppose if I want to reuse that other scart lead, I ought to have taken that off first, though. So, comrades, there we have it. We have our RGB cable for our Nefania all wired up and uh, working well. So if you've got one of those TVs that has a switch though between RGB and composite mode, you probably don't have to make the hardware modifications to this. And through searching through this, to me it looked like the composite output or what should have been the composite output on this was actually a power output. So I don't know. Be careful guys, whatever you do. Um, Next episode, we got to get this working now with the tape drive, and I'll just show you, just to whet your appetite, we have a tape in and and out here, and I think it's just three pins, so I think it's going to be a common and a couple of jacks, so hopefully we can work that out. I'm not sure if I can get hold of a three pin DIN at any sort of short notice during lockdown, but maybe... Uh, <laughs> Maybe I can just butcher another one of these. I think I certainly do have another one of those Mega Drive y um, DIN connectors, so I can probably just try to butcher one. So I think we'll we'll be all right. We'll get on with it. So we'll try that, and then finally we can wrap it up, and I'm going to show you all of the attache case, the joystick, and everything that this came with, and we'll give it a damn good go playing some games. Please list down below any games you want me to try for that video, and as ever, thank you for watching.